Hi, in this video we will discuss asymptotes. An asymptote is a straight line that the graph of a given function is approaching arbitrarily closely. As we will see, precise definitions can be made using limits. We distinguish between three types of asymptotes, horizontal, vertical, and oblique or slant asymptotes. In this video we begin with horizontal asymptotes and then move on to vertical ones leaving the topic of oblique asymptotes to a different video. Let's start with the definition of a horizontal asymptote. The line y equals l is called the horizontal asymptote of the function y equals f of x if either the limit of f at positive or negative infinity is equal to l. Have a look at the following graph. The function f has one horizontal asymptote y equals l at positive infinity. However, here the function has two horizontal asymptotes, y equals m at positive infinity and y equals n at negative infinity. Here the function f has only one horizontal asymptote, y equals l, at both positive and negative infinity. So we conclude the following. A function f can have at most two horizontal asymptotes. How can we find the equations of the asymptotes? To find the horizontal asymptotes of a given function f, calculate the limits of f both at positive and negative infinity. If we obtain a number, it means that there is a horizontal asymptote. Let's have a look at the following example. Find the horizontal asymptotes of f of x equals 2 plus x minus 4x to the 4 divided by x squared plus 12x to the 4 plus 1. We begin by computing the limit of f of x at positive infinity. Namely, we need to find the limit as x goes to infinity of 2 plus x minus 4x to the 4 divided by x squared plus 12x to the 4 plus 1. To do that, we divide the numerator and the denominator by x to the 4 and we get limit as x goes to infinity of 2 over x to the 4 plus x over x to the 4 minus 4x to the 4 over x to the 4 all of that divided by x squared over x to the 4 plus 12x to the 4 over x to the 4 plus 1 over x to the 4. Once we simplify we get limit as x goes to infinity of 2 over x to the 4 plus 1 over x cubed minus 4 divided by 1 over x squared plus 12 plus 1 over x to the 4. To compute this limit, we observe that we have four terms that contain x and they all have the form of a number divided by a positive power of x. Since positive powers of x tend to infinity as x goes to infinity, those four terms will tend to zero as x is approaching infinity. And therefore the whole limit will be equal to negative four divided by 12, which is of course equal to negative one third. A very similar computation will show that the limit of f as x goes to negative infinity is also equal to negative one third. And therefore we conclude that the line y equals negative one-third is the only horizontal asymptote of f of x at both positive and negative infinity. Now let's move on to another example. Find the horizontal asymptotes of g of x equals to the natural logarithm of e to the x plus e square. Again, we start our solution by computing the limit of g of x as x goes to infinity. That's going to be the limit as x goes to infinity of the natural logarithm of e to the x plus e squared. Now, as x goes to infinity, e to the x will go to infinity as well. And the natural logarithmic function will also go to infinity as the variable goes to infinity. Therefore, the whole limit is equal to positive infinity and we conclude that g of x has no horizontal asymptote at positive infinity. 
Now we have to check the behavior of g at negative infinity. Namely, we need to find the limit as x goes to negative infinity of natural logarithm of e to the x plus e squared. Now as x goes to negative infinity, e to the x will go to 0. And therefore, this limit is equal to the natural logarithm of 0 plus e squared. This is equal to the natural log of e squared, which is clearly equal to 2. And therefore, the line y equals 2 will be a horizontal asymptote of g at negative infinity. We now proceed to discussing vertical asymptotes. As you will see, the procedure for finding vertical asymptotes is quite different from the one we used for horizontal asymptotes. Also, a function can have more than two, and even infinitely many, vertical asymptotes. As before, we start with the definition and move on to an example. The line x equals c is called a vertical asymptote of the function y equals f of x if at least one of the following one-sided limits of f at c is either positive or negative infinity. For instance, this function has two vertical asymptotes. x equals negative 1 is a vertical asymptote since the right-hand limit of f at negative 1 is infinity and the left-hand limit is negative infinity. x equals 2 is also a vertical asymptote of f. Note that the left-hand limit is a number, but the right-hand limit is positive infinity and therefore x equals 2 is indeed a vertical asymptote. In this picture, f does not have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1, since both the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit will not be equal to positive or negative infinity. A function can also have infinitely many vertical asymptotes. For example, the function 1 over cos x has infinitely many vertical asymptotes, as you can see in that graph. So how can we find vertical asymptotes? We're going to use the following remark. A function f can have a vertical asymptote at x equals c only if f is undefined or discontinuous at that point. This remark will help us identify the x values at which f might have a vertical asymptote. Let's proceed now to an example. Find the vertical asymptotes of f of x equals e to the x minus 1 divided by x squared minus x. Let's begin by finding the domain of this function. Note that x squared minus x can be written as x times x minus 1, and so the domain of f is the set of all numbers except 0 and 1. If x equal to 0 or 1, then the denominator becomes 0, and f will be undefined. Now, since f is continuous on its domain, it may have a vertical asymptote only at x equals to 0 or to 1. This follows from the previous remark. So let's start by checking the right-hand limit of f at 1. This is going to be the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of e to the x minus 1 divided by x squared minus x. Now we can rewrite the function and get the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of e to the x minus 1 divided by x multiplied by 1 divided by x minus 1. Now, the limit of e to the x minus 1 over x as x goes to 1 will be equal to e minus 1 over 1, which is a positive number. The limit of 1 over x minus 1 as x is approaching 1 from the right will be equal to positive infinity. And therefore, the whole limit will be equal to positive infinity. Well, the right-hand limit is infinity, and therefore we conclude that x equals 1 is a vertical asymptote of the given function f. 
Now let's see what happens when x equals 0. Again, we compute the limit of the function as x goes to 0, and this can be rewritten as before as the limit x goes to 0 of e to the x minus 1 over x times 1 over x minus 1. Now the limit of 1 over x minus 1 as x goes to 0 is easy to compute. We get 1 divided by 0 minus 1, which is of course equal to negative 1. The limit of e to the x minus 1 over x as x goes to 0 can be written as e to the x minus e to the 0 divided by x minus 0 as x goes to 0. And we can identify this limit as the derivative of the function e to the x evaluated at x equals 0. Since the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, when x equals 0, we obtain e to the 0, which is equal to 1. By the way, this limit can also be computed using L'Hopital's rule. Combining these results, we get that the limit as x goes to 0 of the given function f will be equal to 1 times negative 1, which is equal to negative 1. We didn't get positive or negative infinity, and so we see that f does not have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Our conclusion is that the line x equals 1 is the only vertical asymptote of f. Let's have a look at the graph of f. We can see clearly that the line x equals 1 is a vertical asymptote. However, even though the function f is undefined at x equals 0, there is a hole in the graph and there is no vertical asymptote there, since the limits from the left and from the right at x equals 0 are not equal to positive or negative infinity. To summarize, horizontal asymptotes can be found by computing the limit of the function at plus and minus infinity. However, in order to find vertical asymptotes, we must first identify the points at which the function is undefined or discontinuous, and then check if a vertical asymptote exists at each of these candidates. We finished this video with a few practice problems for you to work on. Some of them are quite tricky. Give them a try. Thank you for watching, and good luck.